Today we're going to be looking at these NZXT motherboards. They are new. They are the N5 and N7, and they are both Z690 motherboards. Like most NZXT products, the front of the box is pretty minimalistic, is putting it probably the best way, or basic in another way. You basically get the picture of the product, tells you the model, but the model number, and that's pretty much it. And as you can see from both these boxes, they look very similar. The only exception is the obviously the image of the motherboard, and you can see it's sort of got a shroud over the top of that one, where this one does not. But otherwise, they look pretty similar. The back of the side of the box is pretty straightforward. The multilingual has got full specifications on there, tells you what sockets, memory, and all the other details you'll need to know on there. So inside the box, or should I say the sleeve, you've got another cardboard box, which comes with a cardboard tray, which the motherboard came in in foam, as well as an anti-static bag. Both boxes are basically the same for both motherboards, with the exception of obviously the obvious thing is the motherboards are going to be different and the writing is going to be a little bit different on the manuals. There is one extra M.2 screw in the N5 box, so there is three screws in the N7, and four screws in the N5 box. You've also got a little riser as well for an M.2 socket. You've got two wireless antennas, as well as two bags of SATA cables, so that'll be four cables in total. Okay, let's go over the specifications and have a look at the boards themselves. So in basics, they're both Z690 motherboards, which basically means they're for 12th gen processors. So that's, for example, the 12900K, 12700, 12500, and so forth. You know the drill. You can basically use the latest 12th gen processors on these, so that I've obviously got the 12th gen sockets on there. Now... They both support PCI Express Gen 5, which is pretty much standard. One of the things I am surprised, though, is DDR4. I would have thought these being their top-end boards, they would have moved on to DDR5. I know DDR5 is a little bit more expensive, and there's questions if it performs better than DDR4 or not. But for them to actually bring out brand new boards, top-end specs, and then stick with an older DDR memory, I don't know. Seems a little bit funny, to be honest with you. If you're spending... Two, three hundred pounds on a motherboard. Are you really bothered about having cheaper DDR4 memory rather than spending a few extra quid on DDR5? So again, not sure there. They've both got P uh, Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth version 5.2, which again is pretty much standard on these types of boards, Z690 boards anyway, with, or at least the ones what have included them. But one thing to bear in mind, on both boards, the actual Wi-Fi adapter isn't built into the board itself or hidden under a shroud at the top or anything. They are actually here on just above the second PCI slot there, which with a cable going leading from there for the antenna going into the I.O. panel at the back where you would put your antennas, which to be honest looks a little bit of a messy way to do it. I've got a Asus Strix, but uh, I've got an Asus Strix board, which is the Z690F. And that's got built-in Wi-Fi, and they've not done that. They've It's either hidden under here, or it's actually built into the motherboard itself. So I know it's a good thing that you could potentially take it out, swap it out for a newer version when one comes available, but it just looks a little bit messy. This board here, the N7, is exactly the same. It's just hidden underneath the magnetic shroud here, and there it is. I'm not a fan of that, to be honest with you, or at least in the Wi-Fi sense. So you've got, each one's got three M.2 sockets on, so you've got one hidden underneath the shroud at the top here, as well as one there and one there. A lot of boards I've found in this sort of price range, to be honest with you, usually come with four sockets, which is probably why, obviously, this is taken, or should I say, the wireless has taken up probably one of those sockets, to be honest with you, because I know, for uh, for example, again, that Asus Strix board, what we're using in the other room, as well, we've got a couple of Gigabyte ones, They've all got four PCI Express sockets, so they are actually missing out on one of the M.2 sockets there, which is a bit of a shame, to be honest with you. Obviously, they both support NZXT's CAM software, which is pretty straightforward. You can change the RGB lighting and probably do a little bit of overclocking if you really wanted to and so forth on there. You do dif have different colour options as well, so... Um, you've got uh, black and white options with different trims as well. So pretty straightforward. The 
CPU has a 13 phases on it on the N7 compared to the 9 on the N5. The PCB is basically six layers, so that means there's six sheets with lots of bits in between them and so forth on both of the boards, which again is pretty standard on a Z690 board. But the N7 does specifically say it's two ounce copper, doesn't mention what is in the other one, unfortunately. But otherwise, they're very, very similar. There is one or two extra connections on the back and so forth. But in all reality, the only real difference is this magnetic shroud. And as you can see here, you can just peel that off. No screws needed. It just pulls off like that. So it's pretty straightforward. But saying that, even though it's got a magnetic shroud there, which is good and everything, there is no, where you put your M.2s, I don't think they're actually touching the shroud and there's no way to conduct the heat between one and the other. Usually you have some sort of thermal pad underneath which presses against the M.2, which allows it to transfer the heat through to the shroud and then it allows it to cool off. I think this is mainly, to be honest with you, by the looks of it to me, just for looks, to be honest with you. If you like that smoother look rather than that, then this may be for you. But otherwise, pretty much everything looks like it's in exactly the same spots. Now, if you do want to get to the top shroud, where the first M.2 is, you do actually have to unscrew that. So it's a bit pointless having a magnetic strip over the top of it and taking that off and then undoing two screws to get at it. Is why you got a toolless design and then having screws underneath it, it seems a little bit daft. So uh, I know that one's probably got um, underneath the actual thermal pads to help cool down the SSD. But again, I would have thought they would have done the same with the other two sockets as well. And this bit here will unscrew as well if you do want to take it off. But otherwise, they look very, very similar. There are a few differences, but they do look very similar. So the back of the N5, we have got two antenna ports there, which obviously the antennas are in the box. You've got one HDMI socket as well. That's obviously for connecting up to the graphics built into the CPU. If your CPU has built-in graphics and you're not using a GPU, uh, which is pretty standard, to be honest, you've got two standard USB ports on there as well, which are here, so your traditional 2.0s. You've got one... USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C, so that's there. And you've also got one USB 3.2 Gen 2 standard A socket, which is just above it. You've got four USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, so two over here, two over there. And then on top of that, you've got a clear CMOS button, as well as a clear, uh, the sorry, a BIOS flashback button so obviously if you have any issues with your bios you can reset it back to a previous bios version or you've been overclocking got the wrong um, details and it won't boot you can clear your bios without going inside the machine you've also got your lan connection there as well and your hd audio on the back of the n7 you've got your bios flashback and clear bios buttons there you've got your two antennas again hdmi same as the rules on the previous one you've got two traditional usb 2 sockets you've got a usb 3.2 gen 2 type c socket there and a standard a socket there it does say there is one more socket on there which is usb 3.2 gen 2 but i'm not sure which of those four it is but the other three are USB 3.1. So it just gives you a rough idea. You've got your RJ45 connection, also known as your LAN connection there. You've got your audio channels there for 5.1, and you've got a digital output as well. Okay, let's have a quick look at the BIOS. Apologies for reflections because we're filming this directly off a monitor and it just happens to be glossy and it's picking up every single bit of a reflection. But as you can see here, it tells you the model number at the top, the N5. Z690, blah, blah, blah. It tells you, obviously, the BIOS number as well. It tells you about your processor, installed memory. You can see where what slots you've got it put in. You've also got XMP profile 1 and 0, depending on which you want it on, and it'll tell you what settings it's going to put it on. Uh, you've also got storage configuration. This is what they class as the basic mode, so it lets you change basic things like boot order, uh, as well as the fan CPU settings and so forth. You can change it performance, full speed and silent. Bear in mind, if you're using something along the lines of the NZXT software, the CAM software, 
if you set, for example, the fans for silent in the BIOS, but then in the cam software, you set them for uh, full on, then that's going to override the BIOS. If you want more options, obviously at the top, you can see basic information about temperatures there. But if you want the advanced options, you just click where it said advanced mode at the top right hand corner or press F6 on your keyboard. So if it does want to go on there, there we go. Uh, once you're on that screen, you've got again, main information about the PC there. You've got an overclocking tab, which will let you do uh, most of the overclocking information and things you want to do, including voltage control, CPU configuration, and so forth. Uh, you've got all your different options you'll need in there. So pretty straightforward, but again, most people these days usually use overclocking software and so forth. If you're doing it, obviously in the cam software or something like that, it overwrites what's in the BIOS. You've got an advanced tab as well. So you've got all your standard stuff, CPU configuration, chipset, storage, NVMe, trusted computing, and everything like that as well. Tools, you've got secure arrays, NVMe sanitation tools, and then you've got an update utility. So you can flash it, which is pretty good. You've got your PC monitoring, which tells you your temperatures and stuff like that. Uh, but you will find that the actual tuning of fans and stuff isn't the best to be honest with you again you'll probably wish, want to do the uh, cam software if you want in specific levels it doesn't give you too much it's basically do you want it silent standard performance or mo uh, uh, full mode you've also got customized as well so you can do a bit of duty time but there's no graphs or anything like that if that's what you're wanting uh, otherwise you've got a security tab on there uh, with supervisor passwords and stuff, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, and you've then got your boot screen where you can change boot options and different bits and bobs like that. Otherwise, that's pretty much it for the BIOS. So the N5 motherboard, is it any good? Well, the answer is it does everything it should do. There wasn't any issues. We're able to do some light overclocking on there as well. We're able to get the 12700K Intel 12 gen processor to 5 gigahertz on the performance cores and 4 gigahertz on the efficiency cores with a max boost of 5.2 gigahertz without any issues. It was able to cool everything down, but obviously the cooler does all that. It's got plenty of options on there for extra drives for, for example, NVMe or SATA drives and so forth. You've got everything you should need in a motherboard. In reality, is it an NZXT motherboard or is it actually an ASRock motherboard? So a lot of the menus and systems in the BIOS and so forth will look very similar if you've had an ASRock motherboard in the past. And in all honesty, this board is probably six, seven, eight months late because the 12th gen processors have been out for a little while now. So in all honesty, does it bring anything new to the board or anything different in reality? Not really. It's like most other 12th gen motherboards on the market from what I can see anyway. So would I recommend it? Yeah, I would recommend it. Um, if you like NZXT products and you want that whole ecosystem, then it would make a perfect motherboard for you. So the N7 motherboard, it does everything it says on the 10. It performs very well, very stable, no issues at all. But saying that, it just seems to be lacking for a top end board. For example, no RGB on a motherboard this day and age, especially on the Z690 motherboard, which is the top end ones is usually backlighting or at least some sort of a lit up logo. None of that. You could say NZXT has gone for the minimalist look, but then again, you've got an elite case, which has got RGB lighting. We've got RGB on the water coolers. You've got RGB on the keyboards and mice, just not on this motherboard. It just seems a little bit strange. Also, this basically the paneling or covers or whatever you want to call it, what are magnetic, they look good, but they're not very practical. For, for, exa for example, the NVMe drives, what go underneath them, with the exception of the top one, there's no actual thermal paste or pads or anything what connect them to the solid state drives, which will be installed in underneath which seems a little bit strange because usually you'd put stuff like that over the top of your NVMEs to help cool them down. It's just there to, well, for looks really. And that sort of hinders obviously the SSDs a little bit because you're not making them as cool and a hot SSD can actually perform worse than a cool one with, well, the same as most electronics in reality, especially on computers. Now, the problem is though, is if you've got, an, let's say an SSD in the second slot, the graphics card's going to be over that slot as well. And then you've got a metal plate going over the top, which is not actually touching that SSD. 
There's no airflow getting to that SSD at all, which seems a little bit strange. But saying that, the board does everything it should. It looks nice. It's just lacking a few things, especially for its price point. It's just as if, I don't know, the run out of ideas or the run out of time to develop it. They thought, oh, we ain't got time to put RGB on. We're not doing that. We're not going to put the thermal pads on. So we're not going to bother doing that. And a few other little niggly things like that. Yes, I do like how you can connect the connections, for example, the USB and SATA connections on the side or the front side of the board rather than it sticking out. But they've only done that with a couple of the connections. They could have done that with a USB 3.1 connection and even the 24 pin connection on the motherboard would have made it look a little bit more unique and a little, little bit better to cable your power supply cables going through. But again, as I said, it's still a good motherboard. It performs well, but I'm just not sure if it really competes against others on the market at the same price point. I hope you all enjoyed that review about the NZXT motherboard. If you're interested in more NZXT products, make sure you click that box up there and we've got loads of them. Otherwise, if you're interested in thermal paste, we reviewed 10 different thermal pastes just recently. Click that box there to basically see which one performs the best. Otherwise, thumbs up, likes, comments, you know the drill. See you next time.